check is nothing. I don't want to. I can't live off of that. I value my peace personally. This check cannot sustain my lifestyle. Why would you waste your time like that? The lighting in my living room sucks. The lighting in my kitchen is much better, but there's nowhere to sit. It's a whole thing. So, sincere apologies if the lighting gets any worse or it gets better or whatever. Like, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to make this really quick, but we're gonna go over pay as promised. We're gonna talk about everything that I will be taking home pay wise this month as a junior flight attendant at my airline based in Atlanta at one year pay, which is let me give y'all the specs. My current Flight pay rate is $35.85. $35.85 is what I am making per hour of flight time. That said, let's get started. I'm gonna put my schedule right here. Today is November the 20th, which is why that day is highlighted. And we're gonna start from the top. At the very top, right? November the 4th, you see TDOT. TDOT is a day that I was scheduled to work. I think I had like a Montego Bay or a Cancun turn or something. I didn't wanna work. So I put it up for trip drop. This isn't the same thing as when I'm saying that I put my 8A for instance, my 8A2 that I drop, you don't see that listed on my schedule anymore for the 20th and the 21st saying T dot. That's because those are two different things. There's a lot of ways that we can get flexible at this airline, which I truly appreciate. TDOT is a trip drop. I drop my trip, my turn that I had to the company without getting paid and the company approved it because they had enough reserve flight attendants and people on call to cover my trip. That is how I was awarded trip job. Now when you see things later in the month like SPT or sometimes you'll see things like PPT, that is not the same thing as trip job because those are days that I am not working but I am getting paid. Trip job is I was working, I dropped my trip to the company without pay and the company approved that drop because there are enough reserves to cover said trip. Hope that makes sense. So that's all for the fourth. As you can see, I started my 8A6 block, the first one that I brought you guys along on, on Sunday, November the 5th with USBE. There's two versions of standby. There's two lounges. I've talked about them in previous vlogs, the A lounge and the E lounge. The A lounge is the domestic lounge. The E lounge is the international lounge. Regardless of what lounge I'm in, I can get called for either trip, but Excuse me. But typically I put in my bids for standby on my A dates in the international lounge because it's just more chill, it's more quiet, and like I said, it's international and my fingers be crossed that if they call me, they're gonna call me for international. I have got in Brazil on my A days sitting standby internationally and um, Johannesburg on my A days sitting standby in the international lounge. So it happens, it doesn't happen all the time. The USBE that y'all see on the fifth means that I sat standby, SB, in the international lounge, the E lounge, for an ultra long trip, which is what that U stands for, like an ultra long range trip, like those four and five day Africa and um, Asia trips and all of that. Obviously I didn't get it. I should also mention that our standby shifts are four hours. We'll go over the pay specifics of that in the pay period right now. I just wanna show y'all what it is that I did. So I sat for four hours in the international lounge on Sunday and then again on Monday for four hours each. On Tuesday, as you can see, the STBE at the top, I was sitting standby and then I got called for a two-day Boston trip. I worked that two-day Boston trip. I returned home back to Atlanta, back to my house on Wednesday night when I got back from Boston. And then on Thursday and Friday, I sat at home on standby. I did not work. However, I was on the schedule to work. I could have been called to work. But I didn't get called to work, however, I still did get paid. We'll talk about it, which is why it's showing 8A2 as opposed to a trip or a layover or something like that. I'm sorry. Um, as opposed to a trip or a layover or something like that as it is showing between the 7th and the 8th. And you see the color change there. And then the 11th through the 15th, I was off. Y'all came with me that weekend. I partied a little bit. I got some work done, all of that. That was it. Um, and then back, I had another 8A6. Two of those days are gone now. Y'all know why. Um, but that 8 day 6 started on the 16th with standby again, ultra long standby in the E International Lounge. I sat for four hours, I was not used, I returned home at the end of that shift. And then at the end of my four hour shift on Thursday, because I didn't get used, I put in a preference for the weekend because I wanted to have a little bit of control over what I had gotten. I could have risked it all and prayed that I didn't get called 
and went out and did whatever and just pray they didn't call me because when they do call I gotta be to the airport in two hours maybe more but the minimum is two hours but I didn't want to be sitting on edge all weekend long warning if they're gonna call me or not so I just went ahead and put in a preference it was a decent trip it was worth good credit we'll go over the credit and the pay in just a minute um and it was an a position which is what I wanted so I put in a preference for this trip the trip that I just got home from uh, yesterday, I got to change my battery in like two seconds. I laid over in Dallas and Vegas. When I got to Vegas, I put my 8A2 up for drop, which was Monday and Tuesday. It ended up dropping that same evening. I got home from Vegas yesterday, last night, and now we're here, okay? All right, sorry y'all, my camera died. But that's all that I worked this entire month. That's all that I worked. What you're seeing, SPT, scheduled, personal time scheduled paid time scheduled personal time i can't remember but it basically means that i pre-plotted pre-scheduled paid time off the 22nd through the 27th of november i did that obviously for thanksgiving i pre-plotted this like a month ago the company approved it it's based on seniority order which is very surprising that i got it honestly um but i bid for a week off for thanksgiving well six days off for thanksgiving week i got it and I will be paid for that time, six hours per day. Speaking of six hours per day, let's get into all of the pay. I'm bringing out the big guns. I'm bringing out the big guns, y'all. Let's go over everything that I got paid. What y'all know so far is that my flight pay rate is $35.85. I don't even know that I knew that. I knew it was 30 something, but I didn't know the specifics until this moment when I just went to look it up. But anyway, 35 hours, I mean $35.85 per flight hour that flight pay rate is our rate per hour whether i'm working the flight or deadheading on it when the door is closed that does not include the 45 minutes to an hour of boarding that does not include the 45 minutes to an hour of deplaning that does not include all the hours that i am away from home that is just the flight in flight hours when the aircraft door is closed passengers are on board whether i'm working it or deadheading it i'm getting paid that 35 85 Okay, now I'm going to put my full pay breakdown for the entire month of November for this job alone on the screen and we're going to walk through it line by line. So the first two lines, as you can see, are covering November the 5th. Our minimum pay on A days, regardless of whether I'm working or not. If I am on call that day, even if I'm sitting at home, I get paid 4 hours and 45 minutes of my flight pay rate, regardless of whether I'm flying or not. I'm getting paid a guaranteed four hours and 45 minutes for every day that I am on call. That includes standby. However, on standby, my guarantee, I don't know how to word it correctly, but I'm gonna explain it and hopefully it makes sense to y'all. My guarantee for standby is two hours. However, if I get caught on a trip and I fly over my four hour and 45 minute guarantee, I only get paid two hours for standby. However, if I sit my four hours of standby, I get paid for the two and I don't get used, they owe me still that remaining two hours and 45 minutes. That's what those first two lines are saying and that's why there's two lines covering one day because I got paid my two hours but then I didn't get used so the company said okay now we gotta pay that additional two hours and 45 minutes because my guarantee per day regardless of what go what's going on is four hours and 45 minutes and we'll get to that later and you'll see it again when I was sitting at home on standby. I didn't do shit that day but I still got paid my guaranteed four hours and 45 minutes. Moving on. The same thing happened on the 6th. Those are the next two lines. And then on the 7th, it gets a little dicey. Why? Because I sat standby first, which is the one, two, three, third line on the 7th is my standby. I got paid an hour because I think I sat for two hours and I got paid half of that. And then you see board one and two because once I was called off of standby, I worked two flights. And at my airline, we do get paid a, um, a prorated rate for boarding, most airlines do not. That pay that I was talking about before, once the door closes, is all that most airlines um, get paid as far as flight time and everything. But at my airline, we do get a prorated amount for boarding pay. And I worked, I boarded two flights that day, which is why there is board one and board two at the first two lines for the seven. The third line of the seventh, we already went over. And that fourth line for November the seventh, when I extend it, it gives me my breakdown of everything that I worked and why I am getting paid for nine hours and 47 minutes. 
That is because on the 7th, I worked one flight from Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale, which was one hour and 35 minutes. Then I worked from Fort Lauderdale to Boston, which was three hours and eight minutes. And then on the 8th, I did head it home, which means I didn't work the flight. I was just a passenger, but I still got paid my flight time. I did head it home from Boston to Atlanta, which was blocked at two hours and 37 minutes for a grand total of that nine hours and 47 minutes. The reason that you don't see board pay for the flight that I did headed home on on the November the 8th is because I wasn't working that flight. So I don't get the boarding pay for that flight. I got on that plane, I sat in my seat, and I acted as a passenger. Was I in uniform? Yes, all of those things. But I was just a passenger. I was just happy to get paid. But I don't get the boarding pay for that. And the same applies just while we're on the topic. When I am sitting on standby and they call me because a flight attendant somewhere is running late and they need me to just assist with the boarding of the flight, unfortunately, I still don't get paid for that flight. I did board it. I did do the work. But I'm getting paid for my standby. They're not about to pay me for standby and then pay me to board a flight that I didn't end up working. The flight attendant that was scheduled to work the flight when he or she arrives still gets paid for that flight time and that boarding pay for that flight even though they weren't the one that boarded it I was. But I'm still getting my standby pay so it's cool. So that's all for the 7th and that covered the 8th as well. And then on the 9th y'all see guarantee 4 hours and 45 minutes. Y'all just saw my schedule on the 9th. I was sitting at home on the 9th but I still got my guaranteed 445. The same applies to the 10th. As y'all can see, there is nothing here between the 11th and the 15th. That's because I was off. And then on the 16th, we are back with the vengeance, sitting standby in the international lounge for those four hours and we got paid our 445, our two hours plus our two hours and 45 minutes. Then on the 17th, this brings us to the trip that I preference, the trip that I just worked that I preference. I'm just gonna give y'all the trip breakdown, which I can see under that third line, and it will tell us why I am getting paid 17 hours and 51 minutes. The first day I worked two flights from Atlanta to Detroit, blocked at one hour and 39 minutes, then Detroit to Dallas, blocked at two hours and 52 minutes for a grand total for that day of four hours and 59 minutes. Then on the second day, I worked two flights from Dallas to Los Angeles, which was blocked at three hours and 18 minutes, then Los Angeles to Vegas, which was blocked at one hour and three minutes. And also while we're on this, we get paid the block time. Our flight, just for information, from Los Angeles to Las Vegas was only 42 minutes. But that captain was just flying a little extra fast. It's not about what the flight actually was, the actual flight time. I get paid regardless for what the block time in the system was. Now, if we go over the block time for whatever reason, whether a medical event, whatever it is, I still get paid the block time as a guarantee. Additionally, if we do the math on this, three hours and 18 minutes plus one hour and three minutes is only four hours and 19, 20, 21 minutes. Four hours and 21 minutes. However, as you can see, my pay for that day was still four hours and 45 minutes of flight pay time. Why? Because our guaranteed pay, regardless of what we work, I can work a 45 minute flight from Atlanta to Charlotte and that be it, but my guarantee, regardless, is four hours and 45 minutes. So that's why I still got paid four hours and 45 minutes on day two. Then on day three, I worked two flights again from Vegas to New York, then New York to Atlanta. Vegas to New York was five hours and 21 minutes. That flight was so long, y'all. It felt like forever. I feel like I could have went to Paris. Um, and then uh, New York to Atlanta, which was two hours and 22 minutes, which brings us to a total credit for flight time of eight hours and seven minutes. And the trip total, 459, plus 445 plus 807 is the 1751. I got paid 17 hours and 51 minutes for that trip. Let's do the math on that, just, just because. Just because we can. Uh, 35.85, which is my flight pay rate, times 17.51 equals $627.73-ish cents for that trip. Now, if that's what I was able to take home, that would have been great, but we all know taxes and, and um, uh, what's it called? Insurance and shit, deductions, deductions. I'm an adult, deductions. Um, comes out of all of that, so that's not what I took home, but just, just so y'all can see, 
um, that is the math on that particular three day trip. And that is not including time away from base because time away from base, we're about to get to it, um, I get a per diem for all of the hours that I am on duty and away from my home. But that's not the flight pay, that's a different rate. So that brings us to yesterday, and then today and tomorrow I drop, and then the following six days, which is November 22nd through the 27th, I'm getting paid six hours per day for my scheduled personal time. Now I'm going to pull up my credit for pay purpose, and we're going to go over all of the ways that I got paid for this month or that we do get paid for any month um okay total rotation credit is the flight hours for every trip every trip heavy on trip okay every trip that i worked this month y'all know i literally only worked two trips the boston trip and the trip that i just got back from yesterday that was five days total and the credit for those two trips combined was 27 hours and 38 minutes at my pay rate, my flight pay rate of $35.85 per hour for a total of $990.66. Second line, I got 17 hours and 49 minutes of flight leader pay at a rate of $3.50. I'm not sure why the hours reflecting on this is different from the hours that's reflecting in the trip because y'all remember it said 17.51. Like I don't really care about the two minutes, but I'm just saying like I don't know why it's different. Um, but because I flew the A position, the flight leader position on my last trip, I got paid an additional $350 per hour, okay, um, for working that position on that trip, which was an additional $62.36 for that one trip alone. I love that. So in addition to the six whatever whatever that we just said that I got paid for that trip, I got an additional $62.36 for flying the flight leader position, which is, it's easy, it's not hard. Um, so why not take the extra money, okay? I did have meals on like every flight, so that's annoying, but there's that. Then I have my time away from base domestic. We also have a different rate for international, which is why this specifies domestic at the rate of $2.85. For international, I think it's an extra like dollar or extra two and change, something like that. But I didn't have any international on this month so we won't be able to see that sorry but for my time away from base I was away from my base as in all of my layovers and all of that for 77 hours and 50 minutes this is very low all of this honestly is very low keep it in mind y'all I only work 10 days okay and I don't even count that because I was only really away from home at any given point away from the city of Atlanta I mean for five days total I had a three day and then a two day and that's it so my time away from base is very low, but so is everything else. So take that with a grain of salt when we're talking about these totals and everything. But anyway, $77.50 at my per diem rate of $2.85 for a total of $221.83. And per diem, while we're at it, is untaxed. I get taxed on everything else. Uncle Sam is gonna get his cut, but per diem does not qualify for that deduction because the idea of per diem is my job's way of paying me so that I can in turn pay for food and other necessities because my job took me away from my home to fulfill the duties of my job. So that is what per diem is for and that is why it is untaxed. And then I got 35 minutes of holding pay at a rate of $15. We held for apparently 35 minutes at some point in um, like New York or Vegas. They said there was like a lot of business jets or something like clogging up the airspace so we couldn't take off for a while. So we held on the ground for about 35 minutes for that. Um, and that was $8.75. Also, I finished my fourth quarter CBTs. Every quarter at my airline, we have a computer-based training that we have to complete online. It does take a few hours, but we get paid a flat rate of $80 um, for completing that every quarter. So. There's that, and then I got my boarding pay, which we get paid $11.95 for every domestic narrow body boarding. It changes based on where you're going or what kind of aircraft you're flying, but for all intents and purposes, for what I worked, I got paid $11.95 for each boarding, each flight that I boarded. Then I got my 8A guarantees, my SPT, which is six hours per day for six days for a grand total of 36 hours at my flight pay rate of $35.85 for a total of $1,290.60. I'm literally getting paid more for taking SPT than I am for the remaining entire month that I worked. 
but I'll take it. And then I got some standby pay and all of that, of course. Which brings me to a grand total for the entire month, including the credit. It brings my total hours of pay for this month to a grand total of 88 hours and 23 minutes. That's nothing. I know people that's flying like 120, 150, like they're comfortable around there, I could never. However, I have maxed out at about 110 and that's with me preserving my off days because I appreciate, I love, I love my time off. Not on call, I mean just off, like today. I, I love that for me. Um, some people work every day. We do have to have 24 hours off every seven days, but that 24 hours off can be on a layover. So if you're doing 30 hour layovers or international trips with long layovers and things like that, it's easy to do, you can work every day. But, I don't know, I value my peace personally. And I don't live, breathe, and die and need this check to um, live my life, so I don't. Like, I, I love my job, I love the benefits of my job. It's a very easy job, personally. Um, so, I do what works for me. My check is nothing. Um, and this is before deduction. I don't even think I ever told y'all what the math was, but my total for the um, month would be 88 hours and 23 minutes for a total of $3,653.10. Total for the month. I can't live off of that, but I don't live off of that. And I don't expect you to live off that. There are ways around this. Obviously, I could do more by only taking high time trips and not swapping into eight days and praying I don't get used or dropping my eight days too and only working 10 days a month, but I don't want to. And only, work in 10 day, and only work in 10 days a month, but I don't want to. I want to be in my house. But, and only work in 10 days a month, but I don't want to. I want to be in my house. So that's where I be. And I'm saying this because I'm speaking to somebody or speaking to multiple people that have left um, comments about, I really, really want to be a flight attendant and I want to enjoy the work that I do, but I work in corporate and I would be taking such a significant pay cut. Yes, you would. You would. Because in your corporate job, let's do the math real quick. Even if, right, you worked a corporate job that paid you, y'all usually be on salary, right? I don't know, I never worked in corporate. But let's say you worked a corporate job that paid you an average, just for sake of this argument, of my same 35.85. But you work that 40 hours a week, that brings you to 14.34 per week. There's four weeks in a month, that brings you to 57.36 per month. And that's before deductions and everything, but let's be clear, so is my little 36.53. That's before all the deductions and all of that too. I get insurance for my job, dental, medical, vision, um, taxes, all of that still has to come out of this little 36.53, okay? I say all that to say that even if you work for my same pay rate, my same 35.85, but you worked it at a full-time job, you would still be grossing 57.36. That a person can live off of. 36.53, I don't know about it. Especially in this in, in this era that we're in, and especially in the city of Atlanta. So there's that. It's definitely something to think about. Let's also do 57.36 divided by 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 work days, business days in a month. You're making $286.80 per day. And this is the corporate people. Or the, you know, nine to fivers, those folks. $286.80 per day if you're making my hourly flight rate at your 40 hour per week job. That's what you would bring home. I, on the other hand, made 36.53.10 divided by 16 days that I worked. And I'm only saying 16. Oh, shit, my battery's about to die again. Sorry, y'all. My battery done died again. That means I've been talking too much. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Divided by the 16 days that I worked, and that's included my SPT, because had I not pre-plotted hours, essentially, on my schedule, I would have been scheduled for more days. I never worked 16 days in a month, but when I'm looking at it, 16 of the days of the month are covered. Um, I am getting paid for 16 of those days. So let's do the math for that. Brings us to 228.3. It's really not that far off, y'all. And you are more than capable of working more to make more. But working more means being away from home more. So I'm not about to turn this into a whole thing. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do an updated video of why not to become a flight attendant, but this is one of the reasons. It may not be for you. 
If you can't survive off of this and you can't be gone more in order to make more, maybe this isn't the career for you. Unfortunately, maybe it's not. And that's okay. But we all have to be realistic about our dreams and our goals and what works for our lifestyle. The things that we dream of may just simply not work and we gotta find another way to do it. Get rich doing what you're doing so you can travel like I do. I keep my job so that I can travel the way that I do. The benefits of my job are the reason that I love my job. I don't love my job because of the pay. I don't love my job for the check that I get because this check cannot sustain my lifestyle. But I love my job for the opportunities and the benefits that it provides me. I spent like $230 or something like crazy, $120? I can't remember, but it was something ridiculously treat cheap for round trip flights from the US to Bali. That is why I keep my job, okay? But this is not sustainable for a lot of people, including myself, and I can understand why it would not be sustainable to you. And I get that comment a lot, but only you know what you can handle. You know what you need to survive. You know how many days you are willing to be away from home. You know if you have kids or a husband or whatever that needs you love and affection and attention every day or you know if you have the support system that can offer that to the people in your life that need you or that can be there for the people in your life for you when you're not able to be. You, you know that. I can't tell you that, but I can give you the pay breakdown. I can tell you what I made this month based on what I worked or what I didn't work this month. And that's what I've just done. So I hope that it shines some light. I hope that it um, provides some clarity in some way. I hope that it helps somebody in one way or another. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something to think about. When I first started flying five years and three airlines ago, I was a broke college student. I wasn't thinking about the check. Quite frankly, I was thinking about the fact that I wanted to travel. That's all that I was thinking about. I was watching people travel on YouTube, ended up coming across some flight attendants that were traveling on YouTube, which is probably a big reason as to why I created this platform for myself anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and I ended up applying on a whim and I got a job at some random um, regional airline that I had never heard of at the time and I started traveling. Y'all have no idea. I was living in Phoenix, I was living in Houston, I was living with strangers, like it was, it was a lot going on. But I came here and I stuck around and I changed airlines for the growth and opportunity that it provided me but the end to all be all, the point, the reason that I'm still here today is because of the benefits, not the check. Okay, so if you worried about the check and you got kids and husbands and mortgages to pay and car notes to pay and whatever else, babe, maybe not. Or maybe, maybe just not right now. There's a lot of flight attendants that I meet that are very new, very new to my airline right now because y'all know we've been going through, or we were, I think it's ended now, but like a huge hiring like over the whole summer and everything. So we have tons. Tons of new people. And you would be surprised at how grown a lot of these people are. These are people's retirement jobs. It's never too late. I'd be flying with people who got kids older than me, people in college, people on this, people on that, that are new to this industry, new to flying, because it's something that they've always wanted to do, but they didn't have the capacity to do it way back when they were 21 and 25 and 30 and whatever. Sometimes it's not realistic at that time, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. But maybe now is just not the time because you know what you are responsible for and only you know if you can handle that coupled with this. And if you know that you cannot, don't waste your time now going through all the hiring process and getting a face-to-face -face interview and getting a conditional job offer and then saying, actually, I can't commit six weeks to flight attendant training right now. Why would you waste your time like that? And now you'll never have the opportunity again to be offered a conditional job offer at that particular airline because you wasted that time, you let these people fly you out, you get the job and it's like, actually, I can't commit to six weeks of flight attendant training. I'm saying this because I've seen it. So maybe now is just not the right time, but that doesn't mean it's no forever, but you have to make that determination. And on the flip side, maybe now is the perfect time. Hello? But again, only you can make that determination. Is it possible to work 40 hours a week as a flight attendant? Yes. We have eight and 10 hour turns that you can work five and six days a week if that's what you wanna do. 
Is it easy to get when you're as junior as I am? Absolutely not. When I bid for one day trips on my schedule, I get four leg turn days that are only worth four hours and 45 minutes. That's why I don't do them. <laughs> That's why I put in for trip drop. I'm not wasting my time going to the airport to do a turn that ain't worth nothing. But do the trips exist that would give you that 57.36 a month? Yes. Working five days a week? Yes. Is it possible? Yes, but these things take time and you have to sacrifice in the beginning. So I say all that to say that there are going to be some shitty leanovers and some shitty three-day trips that you're going to have to work in the beginning or that you're going to get on your A-days or the fact that you're on A-days at all may be the shitty thing to you. That, that, that's going to happen. That's a given. But are you able to sacrifice the time that those will be your problems in this industry in order to get to where you need to be? Or take what the company gives you and then spend hours on the swap board and in open time and in the Facebook group swapping around to get what you need? Is it possible? Yes. Is it attainable? Yes. Is there money to be made? Yes. But is the effort going to be worth it for you? Again, a determination that you have to make. And on that note, baby, I'm out of here. I feel like I did my due diligence. I gave y'all the information and I hope it helps. I really do. I really do. I feel like I am the best worst person to ask that question to as far as paying everything because I don't work. But I was still able to show you guys all the examples of all the things um, and all the ways that you can get paid. And maybe one month I'll go really ham and work really hard every single day. High time trips and all of that so I can show you at the end of the month what I got paid. I doubt it though. But I love you guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe. That's the end of the video. And I will see y'all Thanksgiving week.